Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Yuri, and I am a psychologist. But I have a problem with the word psychology. The meaning of the word psychology, as I, I understand it, is the science of the mind. So the question is, where is the mind? What is the mind? So what psychologists do? They practice the science of some don't know where it is and what it is. Interesting. So, if we don't know where is the mind, I take, took the liberty to make some theoretical assumptions. Now, if we talk about theory, I, in my opinion, theory is something that is opposite of the truth. So, my theoretical assumptions are, and I might be wrong, that all our so-called problems, physical or emotional, are illogical and irrational. There's nothing logical about our problems. So I'm going to give you an opinion, a, an idea about something totally logical. Love. What is logical about love? I fall in love, I get hurt, she left me, I promise to myself never again. Five minutes later, I'm in trouble again. Where is the logic? So, if our problems are illogical and irrational, in my opinion, they are created by our imagination. So, in order for me to help another human being, I will need to use their imagination. Any attempt to explain logically and rationally, and rationally the irrational will be a total waste of time. Yuri, uh, as always, uh, you are um, a kind of a source uh, of, uh, of growing, inner growing for me. Thank you for, for being here and accepting for the first time to be with our colleagues here and uh, uh, to have no agenda for what will go in, what yeah. happened. Um, I like very much, uh, you are um, a pure researcher, so finder of the truth because you say, I choose to believe. So yeah. this is kind of epistemical humility. So you are responsible for your way of seeing the world. Mm -hmm. I choose to believe and in my opinion, I might, and I might be wrong. Okay, so okay. You, you, have, you, are, you are not the truth in, it, in itself. No. No, because Certainly not. Yes, yes. I, I don't know what to do. So you, you accept from the beginning your limits as a human being? Okay. I accept my limits as human being, mm -hmm. but I also accept that we are too primitive and too ignorant mm -hmm. to understand anything. Yes. Because the moment we start knowing what the truth is, at that moment we start growing. And when an apple becomes ripe on the tree, next stage it becomes rotten. Mm -hmm. So we need constantly to grow and uh, to search for something bigger and wider than we are. The moment that we are trapped in a theory mm -hmm. and we make the theory the truth, mm -hmm. at that moment we put ourselves in a box and we stop expanding. So the theory is a kind of defensive structure we, we try to defend ourselves from the reality, yeah. making the dogmas. Yeah. Yeah. And then we take the theory and make a dogma out of yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's like churches. My church is better than your church, and my God is more right than your God. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacques Lacan considered that um, the psychoanal psychoanalyst, for example, yeah. is the one who knows the truth, who knows. Yeah. And the patient come to him asking the knowing that he knows. Mm -hmm. So, but th this is uh, mad because you cannot know the truth. You cannot know. You don't know, in fact. You don't know. You, you're supposed mm -hmm. to, to know, but you don't know. I can know my truth, mm -hmm. but I cannot know the other person's truth. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you know, a person comes and says, uh, I'm suffering from depression. Okay, then if I know, yeah. I said no problem, depression, I've learned in university about depression, mm -hmm. I know how it works and I've got a technique mm -hmm. how to cure you from your depression. Okay. 
So I don't know what depression is. You tell me you have depression, I'll ask you, okay. Uh, what do you mean by depression? Can you explain to me? So you, you, you Teach are, me how yes. to be depressed mm -hmm. so I can help you. You, you. you are open, innocent, innocent, yeah. trying uh, each time to discover again what you have in the front of you, not knowing from the beginning, from theory, what I it should be. We all have our own private dictionary. Mm -hmm. So what the depression means in your dictionary? Mm -hmm. And what stress means in your dictionary? Mm -hmm. Because we have individual dictionaries. Yes. Our semantic language is too primitive to explain anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to realize We this. are lim very limited in our verbal language. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, you are turning, turning in a way upside, upside down the way the mainstream uh, way of knowledge. So, psychology means to have laws, to predict, and to anticipate. And you are saying, no, no. we have uh, to, to do it in the opposite. Okay. The aims of, of psychology mm -hmm. is to simplify a human behavior and not to complicate it. Mm -hmm. Is to simplify it. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, if all our problems are logical and irrational, they create by your imagination. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say another sentence. All our so-called problems, mm -hmm. okay, physical and emotional, mm -hmm. are just a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a symptom and there is a cause. Mm -hmm. So if you have depression, okay, I will explore with you what does it mean to you. I will ask you, so what are you sad about? Because in my dictionary, Depression is not a feeling, mm -hmm. it's just a judgment of a feeling. Mm -hmm. What are you sad about? Mm -hmm. where, where did it start? What happened in your life around that time? And then we start to explore that. Because mm -hmm. you see, in my opinion, there are only five feelings. No more, only five. The feelings are anger, fear, love, happiness and sadness. If you ask a child age four or five, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. They will use those five words. So there's a primal, primal yes. feeling. A child age four or five will not tell I'm frustrated, or I feel depressed, or I feel anxious. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is fear. Mm -hmm. So I remember this young man came to see me, and I say, why are you here? I'm suffering from anxiety disorder. Perfect. Already, yeah. already knows. Yeah. He knows, he went to a psychiatrist, and he was told what he is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I said, to, I said to him, okay, who told you that? My psychiatrist. I said, okay, what are you scared of? Let's simplify it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because those psychological labeling, okay, they become like a defense mechanism. I know what I'm suffering from, so I'm safe, I've got a label. Mm -hmm. My problem has a name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, intellectualizing, abstract, uh, um, doing things more abstract, rationalizing, so uh, um, growing a theory which become uh, cut from his sources. Yeah, this is in fact the problem of all all uh, clinical approaches. Yeah, you you uh, reconstruct the other mm -hmm. already in yourself, and then you are uh, you cannot touch the real person in a way. I'm not touching the real person because I'm trapped in my concept, mm -hmm. in my theory as I was studying in university, okay. okay, and in the head of each department like on university, there's a big professor with a big ego, okay. with their own yes. belief system, and you are studying the psychology mm -hmm. of the belief system of the head of the department. Yeah, yeah, so blind. And everything else is, uh, mm -hmm. it's a sin. Let me come again of your perspective. It's a humanistic perspective. So <clears throat> all of us are perfect human being, normal human being, grown in abnormal conditions. So we are not wrong. We are perfect. We try to survive in an abnormal conditions. So Eric Burns said, mm -hmm. we are all b born a princess mm -hmm. and life turns us into frogs. Yes. So, if the psychoanalytic approach says that we are born bad, mm -hmm. and the cognitive behavior says that we are born like a blank slate, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. The humanistic approach says that we are born good. Yeah. So, this is actually maybe the foundation of what, where I want to, uh, to come from. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to change, except. So the only thing that we need to change is uh, our need to be changed, in a way. What uh, we need to change is our judgment, our judgment. of our own feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because something happened in my life, I feel very sad. Mm -hmm. Society tells me, be strong, don't feel, smile, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You should not feel like that. Mm -hmm. I start judging my own sadness. Because I'm listening to a song of "Don't Worry, Be Happy," mm -hmm. I also learned, uh, read some stupid American books written in California about positive psychology. Yeah. Okay, which another judgment of feeling. Mm -hmm. So if I feel sad, and that, and I believe that I'm not supposed to feel sad, mm -hmm. at that moment it turns to depression. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you've told me uh, in our last interview about the person with cancer. Mm -hmm. the terminal cancer and uh, you ask her what uh, is what thing in this world will, will make you happy she said play the piano yeah so that person and person like like, like her are uh, the can can hope to, to, to change to make this shift instead okay. you you heal some person mm -hmm. their person doomed to suffer okay we have conditions mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Until I don't feel confident, I'm not going to do it. Until I stop being scared, I'm not going to do it. And until something is not happen, mm -hmm. something else cannot happen. Mm -hmm. Causing conditions. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going. We're not going to get married until we have enough money. Okay. There's okay. Always an until. Always. Yeah. There's always an until because you know. Uh, if I have fear of intimacy, then I'm going to rationalize it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I say until. Okay. But the whole idea is feel the fear and do it anyway. You do it first, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> and then and then something happens, okay. because people come to therapy said I have this feeling, take the feeling away from me, and then I'm going to start doing things, mm -hmm. and I'm saying no by doing things. You you change your your feelings. You change your feelings. You've met lots of people in your, your uh, mm -hmm, life. Yeah. So, is is uh, uh, there a person which uh, uh, make you feel um, that you are uh, um, in no position to help him or her? Okay. I cannot help anybody. All I can do. Okay. All I can do mm -hmm. is to encourage the person or teach the person to help themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember it happened to me in India. Uh, I, I was sitting, uh, some people asked me to, to have therapy. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in India in the therapy room and one Indian man comes, mm -hmm. he comes to the room and does that, mm -hmm. he touched my feet, you know, and does that again. And he says to me, are you the healer? And suddenly I felt sick in my stomach. Okay. okay? Yes. Because I understood what he's saying. You're going to heal me. You're going to do something to me mm -hmm. that I'm not going to have this problem anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is the medical model, okay? I have a headache, you're going to give me the pill, I take the pill and the headache will be gone. You're going to do something to me. But don't ask me to do anything about it because it's not to do with me. So a patriarchal model, which the yeah. father and the yeah. son, the father yeah. uh, can, can do anything with the son. Yeah, okay, yes. Okay, but not, listen, I like to reverse things all the time. Please. Okay, so, in my opinion, and I might be wrong, <laughs> <laughs> when a client comes to therapy, mm -hmm. the client comes to therapy as a child to a parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? This is the mentality. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm a man, I'm suffering from stress, I've got uh, some uh, anxieties, uh, so I'm sitting at home, I'm trying to rationalize it, it doesn't work, the more I'm trying, the bigger it becomes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to a therapist, and then the therapist asks me, I want to understand why I have this problem. Mm -hmm. And the intellectuals, they want to understand why. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
So, they came to a specialist as a child to a parent. Mm -hmm. So then I start asking questions and then I start to ask how old was the little you who, who felt fear first time? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's about fear. Mm -hmm. So they said to me four years old. Mm -hmm. And as our problems are illogical, created by imagination, I need to use your imagination. Mm -hmm. And I want you to imagine a little boy standing here, he's mm -hmm. four years old. And I want you to look at the face and the eyes of this little boy. And you are the only person in the whole world that knows how this little child is feeling. Mm -hmm. No psychologist, no psychiatrist, and no medical doctor knows better than you how this child is feeling. Humanistic approach. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. So you are the adult, you know this child better than me. I know nothing. You know what this child needs. What would you like to say and to do with this child? Because you know what this child needs to hear. So at that moment, the answer comes from within. I've not said what to do, I've not said what to say. Mm -hmm. What I've done is split the personality into two. Yes. I took the adult self and the child self and separated them. To create a space of observing or yes. of knowing. Yeah. Because the child we once were is still al alive in our adult shell. Mm -hmm. So when you have fear or sadness or we experience different illogical feelings, my question is, how old mm -hmm. is the person that feels that feeling? Mm -hmm. And it's all always a child. It's, it's a always child. a child because this is where we told, don't yes. feel, don't cry. If you're not going to stop crying, we're going to give you something to cry about. Mm -hmm. And don't be angry. I'm your parent, I like to be angry with you, but you don't be angry with me. Anger is not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Sadness is not allowed. A child comes home and says, my uh, teacher humiliated me from the classroom. Parent says, if the teacher done that, the teacher knows what they do. Mm -hmm. Because you are a child, you are always wrong, the adults are always right. And we grow that way. Mm -hmm. We suddenly have fear of authority. Yes, yes. And this is how politics looks. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, do, we choose to, to lead our countries. Strong, authoritative politicians, mm -hmm. okay? The more authoritative and the more uh, controlling they are, the more we give our power away. So in a way, we live in a world where the narcissistic, pathological maybe person, mm -hmm. and I am using yeah, okay, term, okay, fine, okay, yeah, okay, um, are are making the rule and are um, the, the the are valued in a way, not the the person mm -hmm. with. A, uh, hum epistemological, epistemological humility. Uh, even though Jesus, for example, said yeah. you have to be the last one serving in mm -hmm. order to to uh, to understand and to help, not to be there but here. You have down. to be here. Yeah, you yes. have to be down there. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to see. So your perspective, uh, it's uh, um, I, I like it very much. So I think this is uh, a real science, a real knowledge. I and don't like the word science. Okay, real knowledge, real knowledge, of course. You said science... Psychology is an art and not a science. Yes, science, oh. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. My opinion, I don't <laughs> <laughs> And I want to come now to, to uh, your personal experience. How, what create you, what allowed you to think and to, to see things like this. And I know that you experience uh, 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 the death, the death. You, yeah. you, you, you were declared death, clinical yeah. death, and then many, many uh, surgeries. Mm -hmm. And then they said to you that your life uh, spam hope will be one year. One year. Yeah. It was, I, I think, very, very dramatic for all of us to, to pass. It was crazy yeah so this gave you the measure of human uh, life and death and limits and structure I, I don't, it, it is uh, quite I, 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 I'm okay. not enough humble to ask you uh, in th those words those dramatic experiences that you have. death gives meaning to life mm -hmm. we are in a limited time here okay and what we do with this thing the time we wake up in the morning We'll go to work. Mm -hmm. Not because we want to, but because we have to. We have bills to pay. 
our house belongs to the bank. Our car belongs to the bank. This is called free capitalism. We are back to feudalism. We are not free. So all our life we do something that we have to not because we want to, and we are stuck. And we don't see the larger picture. And then, just for a moment to stop and to think, especially if we have children, what kind of world we want to leave behind us for the next generations? The world out there is getting worse and worse. And we are with our little bank account, with our little job, and we don't see wider. And then what psychology does, they invent new labels all the time. In, the, in 1950, there were seven psychiatric disorders. Today, there are 4,000 of them. When was attention deficit hyperactivity disorder? Okay, 20 or 30 years ago. Nobody heard of it. They are constantly, they invent new and new disorders. From where, why? They complicate things instead of simplifying them. Yeah, yeah. So instead of having, I don't know, three things in our uh, mm -hmm. home, we have 10,000 things. Yeah. More, more and more and more mm -hmm. and more and more. Yeah. We feel overwhelmed and then we, we uh, split ourselves. But shall, shall we come because you see, you've told me uh, uh, last time that uh, there is no fear of death, it's fear of life. It's fear of life, yeah. There is no fear of failure, there's only fear of success. When I failed, I can blame somebody for my mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. While I'm succeeding, mm -hmm. I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I'm too afraid to live, mm -hmm. I start to develop uh, to live. I'm afraid to develop fear of, of, death. of death, and I'm so busy with it, so I don't have to face life. I need to have some labels, you know. I need to feel, I need to suffer from depression. So it gives me, uh, it gives me permission not to go to work. Mm -hmm. And there is also something, it was chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. Do you know that scientifically and medically, nobody can prove that this condition actually exists? There is no a blood test or any medical test that prove that it exists. Of course, if you wake up in the morning and you go to your stupid job that you hate with passion, mm -hmm. of course you, you'll have chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm -hmm. hate, hating with passion your job, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, another thing that we're actually missing in life, it's called passion and meaning. Passion what and do we feel passionate about and what is the meaning of our life? Mm -hmm. And I usually ask, when people come to my school to learn, on the very first day, Okay, I ask the question, what is your personal reason to study what you study? Why Why you go to study psychology? And then I hear, I want to help other people. No, personal reason. Mm -hmm. And I push and I push. And in my opinion, and I might be wrong, everybody that sits in this room right now, mm -hmm. okay, including me and including you, had a very interesting story from their childhood and their background. Mm -hmm. We all have our own personal dramas and traumas. Yes. Okay? And we are aware of it, mm -hmm. consciously, unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So we go out there and we want to do something. Not only... If okay, I, I'll, say it, I'll say it simply as it is. Okay? I'm using my clients to understand myself better, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. I'll, I'll say it even there. I'm an egoist. Mm -hmm. There is no altruistic yeah. values. Jesus said, mm -hmm. love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, don't bullshit, mm -hmm. you cannot love anybody else. Mm -hmm. I hate myself, but I love my children. It doesn't work like that, okay? So we do it for ourselves. And the moment that I know what is my personal reason, to do what I'm doing, mm -hmm. at that moment I'm doing it for integrity. Okay. So when I had a, a near-death experience and I went to the other side and they sent me back, mm -hmm. I came back with an idea, okay, it took some time for the idea to develop because I was thinking I'm going psychotic. My life was given to me as a gift. You know from that moment when you experienced a near-death? Near no. When I, when I came back, 
I got scared because I thought I had a psychotic episode. Okay. Okay. So it, it was took scary. me. It was scary that that. Uh, it was. I, I, I can't imagine. The, what was what was scary? Okay, I'm um, imagine something that does not exist. It can't be like that. Okay, it's illogical. Mm -hmm. I had a psychotic episode. I better shut up and not say to any to anybody mm -hmm. because they're going to lock me in the hospital. Okay. They are at a literature that other people experience it. Mm -hmm. I saw these similarities. So at that moment, I understood my life was given me to as a gift. Mm -hmm. I'm not the owner of the gift. I'm the keeper of the gift. And my mission in life is to give this gift of life to others. Simple as that. This is inter int integrity. Yeah. So, in a way, okay, I can listen to your depression and panic attacks and uh, all the other problems for a few sessions, but there is a moment that I say, stop. What is important for your life? What do you value in life? Why are you here on this earth? Okay, let, let me put it another, um, I want to apologize for a very simplistic language that I'm using, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to the people mm -hmm. because they say that psychology is something we all do, put in a language that nobody understands. Mm -hmm. I like to put things in a way you understand, <laughs> okay? So, young woman comes, okay, anorexia. Mm -hmm. So she told me about her weight and how much exercises she does and how much she will, uh, what was her weight last month and this month. Mm -hmm. So I've listened for 10, 15 minutes, then I've lost my patience mm -hmm. because we can talk about symptoms forever. And you see empty speech in a way. Yeah, something yeah. Like this. Yes. because you see, th the explanation of the client sometimes mm -hmm. kind of defense mechanism. Yeah. They sit and they put bricks up yes, yes. and then we finish building the wall, they say, okay, now let's see what you can do with it. You do, I, yeah. you do nothing, I'm sure, yeah. they count on So, it. I said to her, no, mm -hmm. I understand that the size of your ass mm -hmm. is more important than the size of your brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we had a problem. Ass and brain, okay. But we had a problem. I'm not an ass doctor, I'm a brain doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk with you about the size of your ass. Not interested. Tell me about yourself, what is your dream in life? I want you to imagine for a moment, because you see, in psychoanalysis we're talking about the past. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, so I want you to imagine for a moment mm -hmm. that one day that the anorexia and all this thing about mm -hmm. your weight, all this has disappeared. You are totally cured. What would you do with your life then? What is your dream? Then I start to establish that and I say, okay, what, what about starting it now? In, in fact, you are searching for the, the true self, for the true yeah. movement of wish, yeah. the primal one. Yeah. I'm helping the, the person to get this truth out of them, them. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But to turn it out of them and to make something out of it. Okay. So it's not only the past, it's the future. The future. The future because because it, it was, uh, Carl Jung said, mm -hmm that we focus too much on the past, we have to check the philosophy of the future. Mm -hmm. Alfred Adler said the same, mm -hmm. and Maslow said the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. The philosophy of the future, yeah, yeah. where your life is going. And one of the provocative things that I like to do mm -hmm. is I want you to imagine that you've got six months to live in perfect health. What would you do? Six months and you die. You've got only six months to live, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And. I keep pushing this question. When the answer comes, I said, okay, so why not to start now? Yeah. What, is the, what is really important for you? Yeah. Let, let's move above the labels. Who are you as a human being? What is the meaning of your life? Why are you getting out of bed this morning? For what? Mm -hmm. So at that moment, we don't get hooked on this small problem, okay? And a, a person comes to therapy for 10, 20 years, once a week, and just they talk about it, and the therapist does, mm, I understand. Yeah, empathy, and more empathy, and mm, I understand, and nothing happens. A, a passive victimal position, yeah. keeping the, the victimal position. Yeah. Um, so, if we, we, can, we can better see how the, 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 the wishes that we have as children, mm -hmm. All, all the things will change in our life. So, 
So I, I was thinking about that lady with the, the piano yeah. thing. So actually she was able to buy a piano and to, to learn. And to start and to learn. She would and the moment she started it, okay, mm -hmm. the cancer starts shrinking. Okay. And she she was able each day to play to the piano? Yes. Yeah. Because uh, But it's the question of you know of because what we do sometimes, we we are uh, you know we crash against a, a wall, mm -hmm. a symbolic wall, mm -hmm. and then we don't see beyond it. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, what would yes. you imagine that yeah. I just remove the wall and let's imagine what you what's behind it? What's there? Mm -hmm. What would you like to see? I don't know. And if you yes, know, knew yes. what it will be, we have no guts to see our life after the wall. Yeah. To see a rich life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagination mm -hmm. is something very important. Mm -hmm. When we read poetry, when we see a picture on the wall, when we listen to music, when we uh, read good literature, mm -hmm. all of this was created by somebody's imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even when somebody took and copied a scene mm -hmm. on the canvas, they actually put their own interpretation of what they saw on the canvas. We are, have this beauty around us because imagination. We created, create new things, even new technology, because imagination. Somebody imagined that one day a human being can fly. In, we invented an airplane. Yes, yes. So you, you tell me that we are very rich, we have all the necessary tools yeah. to do beautiful things great things it's there and then listening to you i have a, a, a critical voice saying okay I, I agree this your perspective is so nice so nice but still it's a but okay and the but it's like like this um i can do this uh, feeling your energy and you you i feel that you trust in me one day masandi monday tuesday but I think after three or four days, again, oh, but you see, I will not succeed, and so on, so on. And I need to go to you, to come to you, to, to nourish from you again. Okay. Okay. As I like uh, metaphors and symbolism, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. let me tell you a story. Many, many years ago, I went to visit my brother, mm -hmm. okay? I did not... Uh, not, I don't have children, so my brother has a, a little son, age 11. Mm -hmm. And my brother said to me, I'm going out to the shop to get some milk. Can you look after him? What if some milk? Don't worry. So the little thing was crawling on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I was sitting quite nervous, not knowing what <laughs> to do. Suddenly, he looked at me in the eyes, and I knew the trouble comes. <laughs> <laughs> and this little boy stood up made one step and fell down. Mm -hmm. I was nearly about to jump to save him and then the miracle happened. He stood up again, he made two more steps, fell down, stood up again, made few more steps, fell down, made few more steps. Suddenly the door opens, my brother comes in with a bottle of milk. His son walks towards him. He drops the motor of milk, he looks at me and says, what have you done? <laughs> I told you not to hypnotize my children. The, uh, his first steps from... Yes. Yeah. So I want to remind all of us a very simple thing. The reason that we walked into this room mm -hmm. on two and not on four, because it's much easier to walk on four. Mm -hmm. It's much safer. For some evolutionary reason, we try to walk on two. The reason that all of us walked into this room on two is because we took the risk, we fell down a few times, we got hurt and we stood up again. Mm -hmm. So this human potential is inside us. But very slowly somebody is destroying it. Who is destroying it? They, they call it Thanatos, the, the, the force yeah. of the dark. Okay. And this is, uh, uh, again, are mm -hmm. there, so this is, all this dual dual uh, perspective over the world, mm -hmm. the yeah. Thanatos and Eros, night mm -hmm. and day, and so and so on. And this Heaven is and hell. Yes, kind of story. Yeah. So when I feel uh, I'm pessimistic, 
it came into my, my, this perspective. So I'm pessimistic because my super ego is so strong because the Thanatos force are working mm -hmm. in myself and I have to love myself in order to rebalance the Thanatos. So mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So what? So mother buys a bicycle to her, to her son for Christmas. Mm -hmm. She gives him the bicycle and she said, be careful. Five children were killed last year riding a bicycle. Take the bicycle and enjoy it. <laughs> I phone my mother and I say, Mother, I'm going to Romania. Mother says, Be careful. <laughs> of what? There are no cannibals in Romania. What do you want? Be careful. All our life we grow with be careful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be so, careful. Yes, yes. It's, it's a kind of perspective yeah. of apocalyptic what, perspective. What is the worst thing that might happen? To be killed, of course. Yeah. You're going to get run by a bus mm -hmm. and you know men, they only after one thing, so be careful. <laughs> Don't let anybody too close to you, you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why this voice? Because this is Thanatos, this is the force of this, destruction. This is this because when it's much easier to control a scared person. Mm -hmm. It's about control. So I'm trying to control you, uh, uh, being careful about yeah. you in a way? It, uh, politically, it's the, politically it's the same thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in politics, mm -hmm. okay? We need to have an enemy that we have to be scared of. Okay. Then we can control. Mm -hmm. The Russians are going to invade every moment. Of course. So we have to be a member of NATO mm -hmm. to be protected. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So these Russians are yeah. a, a, a mental representation of the person who is thinking like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the mental representation of our inner fear, okay. of our losing our parents, our guardian, because we cannot manage on our own. So it's better to imagine ourselves being down or, uh, instead of being up. Because it's, I don't have to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me how to be. Okay, so now responsibility and free will. This is the very yeah. important uh, yeah. thing. Um, Ellen Watts said uh, in, in one of uh, his videos that, you see, I'm moving my mind. I'm free willing moving my mind. So I'm deciding to do this, to do this. Yeah. But who is deciding to decide to do this? Is isn't it a spontaneous thing that I'm doing? So if I'm spontaneous, I'm not deciding. So where is the free will? And, and this is a very important uh, if we can, we, we have to, we, we try to understand the free will in the context of the unconscious mind. The free will comes, the, the lack of free will comes from religion. Okay? okay. So religion if you don't it? behave, you're going to be punished. You have to be fear God in certain religions. You have, it's not a loving God, it's a punishing God. You have to fear God. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go to hell if you don't be, behave. So it's a schizoparanoistic paranoid yeah. uh, yeah. perspective. I, I had a client, uh, a schizophrenic client, okay, mm -hmm. that heard uh, uh, voices in his head about this, destroying everything around him. When finally we go to the root of it, okay, he came from a very religious Catholic family and his mother was telling him from very child, what's happening here to you? you? The devil comes into you? You're behaving like the devil, you know? Mm -hmm. And you say a few times, the child believes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Because, let's think for a moment how we raise children. We do something, when they do, we do, they do something wrong, we tell them. When they do something right, we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. We don't praise them. When was the last time your father and mother looked you in the eyes and said to you, I love you and I'm proud of you? You know that some people never had to do that. That simple, that simple thing. Mm -hmm. Because as long as I push you and I criticize you, I think I'm doing good for you because I'm teaching you to be a man and to be strong. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, a, a married couple, and she became very fat, or fat. Yeah. And the husband said, you have to do something, do something, exercise. 
do this, do that. And she uh, felt, feel that uh, um, she's not understood, and so she remained like this. So the husband, what this this husband have to, to, to do in order to help, to really help uh, her, her wife? Maybe it's a stupid example, but uh, it passed from my mind. We, first of all, we cannot help anybody. We can help them to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. It's a, the second time that I, I forgot. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the person that put too much on weight, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. How long ago did it start? Mm -hmm. What happened in your life around the time? Mm -hmm. Now, I read in the book, it's written, I don't know if it's true or untrue, I'm very careful with those things, that weight is a protection. Yes. Maybe, I don't know, it's written in the book. But I will never say to a person, your weight is your protection from something, okay? Mm -hmm. I might ask, you know, is there anything you're protecting yourself from? I might ask, okay? When I say something, I put it as a suggestion, not as a fact. Okay, and she said that I have a, a very aggressive father in the childhood. Yeah. And then I have uh, partners uh, having the same uh, of course. type. Of course. And so what can I do? I'm attracting just... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, it's because of your father. Okay. So I recommend 20 years of therapy once a week. I'm going to talk about it. And after 20 years you're going to be very happy. Because you're going to understand why you have the problem. Just to understand. Yeah, just understand. Mm -hmm. I'll be very happy because my bank account will be quite large by now. Okay. Yes, and the, the house yeah. also. Will and be. the house will be bigger, yeah. Mm -hmm. And 30, 40 clients like that once a week for 20 years, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So by the time of, after 20 years of therapy, you'll be happy because you're going to understand why. But that time, Make sure you put enough money for the to the side, because your children will have to, and we need the same therapy too. <laughs> and when you send your children to therapy, tell them to save money because grandchildren will need therapy too, and it's never going to end. Because what we do in therapy is we talk about it forever. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. The way I would like to do things, mm -hmm. I don't like talking about things. I like doing them. Mm -hmm. When you are hungry, you don't read a cooking book you just go to the kitchen and you cook food mm -hmm. and when you something else you don't cook you don't read the Kama Sutra hopefully you do you do something about it okay it's about doing and not talking so you have problem with your father okay fine so let's start doing something I'm your father what do you need from me to because say that I, that you are proud of me and that I, I am your your beautiful daughter and I okay. will be successful in life and I, I, I have yeah. not to be scared of you and you are not violent and so Okay. Okay. Okay, that's very beautiful. I'm your father. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you hold you against me. What you angry with me about. And then what you need from me. Mm -hmm. And we are, are rehearsing that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I say, you know I'm not your father, just playing a game. Let's do theater. Okay, imagine I'm your father, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to beat you up, tell me. Once we finish this process, I said, okay, you've got to, oops, 20 years of therapy, or you go to your father and you tell him that. Mm -hmm. I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. You know, there yes. are people around age 40 who are still afraid. Very afraid of the father. Yes. Of the father or, and the mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you, you live in fear, and you, at the same time, you raise children. No, I'm sorry, this is too much. And this is where I start to get affected. Because if you want to live a dysfunctional life, mm -hmm. it's your problem. If you're raising two children in the process, I'll say stop over my dead body. You're going to continue like it. So this one come a little bit pushy. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm, because you see, I'm, I'm not here to make people feel better. I'm here to take a mirror, put it in front of you and say, look, this is how it looks like. You don't like it, what are you going to do about it? 
Okay, the, then the person said... We're doing it, I, we're yeah, not talking yeah. about okay, it. Okay, I, I will try, but I, but I know that my father, if I return all of the stuff, will be destroyed. I cannot afford this, so, so and so on, rationalizing. Okay, okay. Now, because I'm making assumptions all the time, mm -hmm. okay? I'm going to make an assumption now. And what I'm saying is, I don't know your father. But in my imagination, I'm trying to imagine him. I see a man that is very scared to express feelings. Mm -hmm. I see a man that is terrified. Mm -hmm. I see a man that feels guilty deep inside. Yes. And it's like a dog. Small dogs, when they bark a lot, they bark because they are scared. Mm -hmm. Aggression is barking, mm -hmm. is covering fear. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you something else about your father. It's not his fault. It's the fault of his father and the fault of grandfather. And it goes generations back. So are we here to stop it? No. And apart from that, when you go to say it to your father, you're not going there to change him. You're going there to change yourself. You take the pain, the dysfunction, or whatever it is, you put it on the kitchen table, and you say, thank you, Father, for listening to me, and you walked away. Because our idea is how it's going to affect the other person. What if the other person is not going to change? What if the other person is not going to understand? So you are conditioning your, your existence by the response of the other person, and this is called freedom. You do this to change yourself, not to change the other person. Okay, I'm going to explain it metaphorically so it's, it's simple to understand, okay? And once again, please forgive me for my language. Because I'm going to do it sim simple again. When I, when I sit on the toilet and have shit, I have shit to change myself, okay? To clear myself. Mm -hmm. But I don't have shit to change the toilet. I have mm -hmm. shit to change myself. So in a way, what I do, I'm doing an emotional release and I'm leaving whatever is there, put it where it belongs. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, and a lot, in some of the cases, there was no response from the other side, the person being quiet. Mm -hmm. In other cases, the other person starts crying, yes. and sometimes a beautiful communication has started. Yes. And I was told that some sick parents have lived actually longer mm -hmm once it was released. Because mm -hmm. you see, I also believe that when a person is on a deathbed, okay, and they keep, they have some terminal disease for many years and they just not dying, mm -hmm. just continue suffering, mm -hmm. because they don't give themselves permission to move to the other side. Mm -hmm. Because there's something unfinished, unsaid, and they don't know how to say it. Mm -hmm. Because education today is about think and don't feel. Be rational. Think. We just don't know how to express our needs and feelings. And then we need to be also specific. I said, I said, uh, I'm your father, and you said to me, I need you to listen to me and support me. I said, okay. What's that? What does it mean? So then I said, what would you like me to say and to do? for you to feel listened and supported. Mm -hmm. I need support. Okay, I buy your wheelchair. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. You see, I, I, as I said, the language is so primitive, okay? So we just throw words into the world. Trying to the understand okay? again and again what's the meaning yeah. in the pers personal yeah. meaning. Or even better, mm -hmm. what do you need? The person will give you a long list of what they don't need. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you go to the, to the supermarket to do shopping and you make a shopping list, you don't write on your shopping list what you don't want to buy. You write on your shopping list what you want to buy. Mm -hmm. I don't want my father to shout at me anymore. Okay, you don't want your father to shout at me. So what is that you want? And suddenly the person, you know, we don't... 
we are so broken. The center, the center of your, yeah. yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just lost our center. We lost our existence. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. If I want to label, okay, mm -hmm. all the problems that we have, mm -hmm. it's an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. We we actually lose the meaning of life, and we lose who we are. Who we are. So, who you are, Yuri? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I stand in front of a river, okay, and I cross the river, then I look back at the river, and the river that I cross is not the same river anymore because it's flowing. When I go to sleep at night, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not the person who went to sleep at night. And if any time your husband and wife will tell you, you're not the person I married, take it as a compliment. Yes, I changed. I'm not the same person. I'm changing all the time. So, so you are a river. The question, we are in a constant change. change. Okay. And the moment we stop changing and flowing, we no, start no. rotting. I remember I, I was, uh, mm -hmm. well, when I go to China to teach, okay. Uh, so when I go to China, they always give me uh, people that will accompany me everywhere, okay. Oh. It's usually two students from the university that have to take me places. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get lost, okay. Mm -hmm. Some kind of politics. Mm -hmm. And we walk in the park, and one girl says to me, "Look, Yuri, there is a pond and there is a river." The pond is green and the water in the river is uh, clear. I look, I said, yes, it is. So you don't understand. I said, I understand, water, clear water, green water. He said to me, no. When it's flowing, it's clear. When it's stuck in one place, it becomes green. Mm -hmm. No, Chinese is something special. They always think in, in symbols and metaphors. They have a very rich insight. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is to listen to things like that. So the who are you? It's the wrong question. It's not the you are not asking a river this question. Okay. Who am I? Okay. I try to answer. I tell you who am I. I am the to understand who am I, I need to understand three things where I'm coming from, where I am now, mm -hmm. and where I'm going to. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. I am the road. Mm -hmm. So one day, I'm driving my car. It was long ago before the GPS, okay? Mm -hmm. A friend gave me his address and said, come for dinner. I'm driving, I'm lost. Don't know where I am. I phone my friend, and I say, I'm lost. Give me directions. So my friend says to me, tell me where you are now, so I can give you directions. <laughs> okay? So I said, one moment, I opened the window, a person was passing, I said, excuse me, sir, can you tell me where I am now? And the person says, you are in your car. <laughs> so I said to the person, are you a psychologist? And the person <laughs> says, yes. How did you knew? Because your answer was not helpful. <laughs> yeah. So where I'm coming from is very important, okay? to understand our inner child, to understand the roots, the emotional roots mm -hmm. of who we are, to understand where we are in life now and what is our place, and then where we want to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But there's something very interesting. We have big fear of change. Yes. Because what's happening around the corner is, is the unknown. So what I'm going to do for those people here, because I do like them, I'm going to cure them from the fear of change in less than a minute. Simple. And I want you to imagine that in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to change. 20 years from now, you still be living in the same house with the same people doing the same thing you are now, and absolutely nothing have changed. If this doesn't give you a panic attack, 
please go and see a psychiatrist or put yourself in a mental hospital. Now you put yourself two fears in front of you. The fear of nothing is going to change and the fear of change and see which fear is bigger. So is it changing its impact on the root of the life and yes. with the possibility to remain alive? Yeah. Is to do something. Is, myself, is to take risks. And is to go beyond the dogma. Mm -hmm. To take risks. To take risks, yeah. risks you know. and to go beyond the dogma. Because sometimes, especially from psychologists, I said, why? This is how I've learned it in university. Why don't you steal? It's written in the Ten Commandments. Is it, this is the only reason you don't steal and you don't lie? Because it's written somewhere. Where's your inner values? Be a human being first, psychologist second. No, we've got ethics. We're not supposed to touch a client. We're not supposed to smile to a client. We're not supposed to talk about self to a client. We're not supposed to hug a client. You know, there are lots of rules. And after we finish studying about the ethics and the prof professional uh, boundaries, then we are told to you're supposed to help the client to open up and trust you. How? Mm -hmm. Having an agenda of yeah. not doing yeah. things. No. The aim of therapy, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love this sentence. Yeah, the, aim, the aim of therapy, mm -hmm. okay, is to give the other permission, the person permission to feel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you come to me and you tell me about how depressed you are. And I ask what's happening in your life. And you are telling me, I'm listening to you and said, you know, when I'm listening to you, I feel very, very sad. Mm -hmm. I feel, when I'm listening to what, how your father treated you, I feel very angry. I said, do you feel angry? No, I don't. Or a good client says, well, if the therapist told me if I feel angry, I'm supposed to feel angry. So I say yes, but I say it from here. When I listen to you, this is how I feel, this is how it's affected me. You're now, how it is for you. So you are giving permission, mirroring yeah. the feeling. It's not only, I'm not, no, you're not, mirroring. not mirroring, I'm feeling you it. You are feeling it. Okay. I'm feeling it. Okay. I'm exposing myself. Yes. I don't sit clinically cold behind the desk, taking notes and so, mm -hmm. Yes. I so hear a lot of anger in your voice. No? I don't hear anger in your voice. I feel angry. I feel furious. So you are exposing angry. yourself. I'm exposing you are, myself. You are living uh, as a human being, listening and yeah. allowing you to, to be touched. 100% all the time. It's much easier to hide between the professional world. I'm the professional. I'm cured. You are dysfunctional. I'm going to fix you. Mm -hmm. But the complex, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can, how, how can we teach um, the, the psychologist, for example? Yeah. Not to be psychologist, so to, to act human. To act, so you, you are in the school and you, you know all the things, so after you, you have to forget all of this stuff in order to, to become yourself. Something like that. Forget everything you've learned. Okay, okay. The theory, okay, is important. Mm -hmm. Okay? The knowledge is important. Mm -hmm. Let's not throw it to the side. Mm -hmm. But let's talk metaphorically again. Mm -hmm. the, the knowledge and the theory, okay, and this research or whatever you call it, is the petrol that you put in the car. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? The petrol, the petrol tank is here. Mm -hmm. But when the car has the petrol, you turn the key, the engine starts. Mm -hmm. And the engine is the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the knowledge is feeling the engine and the engine is the one who is working. Mm -hmm. If you work only from that, you just put putting people in boxes. And the way this is what science has done to us. One day we wanted to understand the world around us. So we started the classification. This is the, we put this in this box and this in this box and this in this box. 
and what doesn't fit in any box, and we cannot explain, measure it, or weight it, we'll throw it out of the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. To, to I asked one, one uh, uh, so-called girlfriend, okay, do you love me? She said, define love, then I will know. <laughs> <laughs> so that means until I don't understand what no, love, love is, I'm not going to love. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this need to understand everything mm -hmm. is another defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Until I don't understand, I'm not going to do it. And now, unfortunately, I have to do something because Camelia Herjo, and I, I'm grateful to, to, to mm -hmm. her because um, he allowed he, all things mm -hmm. happening, yeah. told me that we already passed one hour okay. and we have to, to stop. Maybe Yuri, if I ask, can I ask you to to you to finish the program with something for the viewers? Anything I last for them. Thank you. Okay. So instead of being uh, too smart, I'm going to tell you a story. Because you see, stories we something remember uh, we remember forever. Theories and concepts we forget. So in the mountains of India. Okay, there was a wise man. What the wise man used to do, he went from one village to the other to preach his wisdom. And the way it was done, he arrived to a village in the middle of the day. He had uh, something to eat, he had a wash, he had a rest. In the evening, they done a fire in the middle of the village. All the villagers came and sat around the fire and they were actually, and then he was preaching his wisdom. And each village knew in advance when the wise man is coming. In one of the villages, there was a young man, a very angry young man. He said, the people of this village don't respect me. They invited some old fool to talk about something and they don't know that I'm the wise man. So what I'm going to do, when the wise, uh, old, wise man, old wise man will come, I'm going to show the whole the village that the wise man is not wise, I'm the wise one. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to catch a butterfly. And when the, this old man will start talking, I'm going to run into the circle and say, old man, what do I have in my hand if you are so wise? And if the old man will say it's a butterfly, then I say, okay, now tell me, is the butterfly dead or alive? So if the old man will say the butterfly is alive, I'm going to squeeze my hand, kill the butterfly, mm -hmm. and show everybody a dead butterfly. If the old man will say, the butterfly is dead, I'm going to open my head and let the butterfly fly. Mm -hmm. Whatever he said, I'm going to make him wrong. The day came, the wise man came to the village, he had the food, he had the wash, he had the rest. In the evening, there's a circle, he sits by the fire. As he stands up, the young man comes. Old man, stop. If you're so wise, what do you have in my hands? A butterfly. Now tell me, is this butterfly dead or alive? The old man smiled and said, it is in your hand if the butterfly is dead or alive. So when you go out there to help other people to help themselves, I want you to know that humanity, the future of humanity is in your hand. And it's up to you if you keep it dead or alive. So the most important thing is to keep it with open hand and just to protect it from the wind. It's in our hand if it's dead or alive. This is our resp human responsibility for humanity. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.